something fairly significant to yeah. occur mm. Friday evening. But again, uh, as we look at the current view, uh oh, somebody wrecked. Uh, oh no. But again, um, I'll, the newsroom will get on that. But let's talk about the weather. The picture above the traffic is much better. You can see plenty of sunshine there. A few higher clouds, and I do expect the cloud cover to increase after about midnight tonight. 76 degrees. Winds are light right now. Middle to upper 70s in our area. So all in all, it hasn't been too bad, but low level moisture. That is one of our ingredients that we need for severe weather that is beginning to increase and will continue to do so as we head into tomorrow. 61. That's your low temperature for tonight. Tomorrow we'll hit 80, partly cloudy, warm and breezy. Look at that southeast wind 15 miles per hour. And when you see those stronger winds, that means the wind energy is increasing. And because of that, uh, we do see an enhanced risk of severe weather, but here it is. This is the next storm system and folks still in the Pacific Northwest, so this is going to take a while for it to get here to East Texas. That means there's really not any rain in the forecast for tonight nor tomorrow. This is seven o'clock Thursday morning. We could see a little bit of fog if the wind isn't too strong for that, but it quickly mixes out of the area because those winds will continue to intensify throughout the course of the day. Not a lot happening tomorrow afternoon. Clouds move in, clouds move out and clouds move back in for Friday morning. No issues Friday morning. If you do have those outdoor plans, maybe there's a field trip plan for Friday morning for the school kids, but by three o'clock, this is when I want you to be on alert because we're going to start to to see those showers and thunderstorms firing out to the west and these are isolated and the issue with isolated storms is they can get out into a favorable environment for severe weather and start rotating hence the tornado risk that we have but by six o'clock i do expect these to start consolidating in our western counties and this will move off to the east so i want everybody in our central counties to be weather aware by seven o'clock more likely earlier than that just have that plan in place by eight o'clock this is starting to advance eastward and one thing we're going to watch with this line of storms are any of these little Boeing segments. You can see one from Cass into Harrison County. That's an indication of strong winds, which is per usual with any line of thunderstorms. You see the main threat will be the threat of damaging wind gust, and this will continue to move eastward before it ultimately exits our area by early Saturday morning, meeting maybe one to three o'clock, just depending on the timeline as we head into your Friday night. Here's a severe weather outlook. It's a level three enhanced risk for the northwestern two thirds of our area on a scale of one to five. That's a three. And again, that's the orange shaded region. The slight risk is out for our southeastern counties. And as we look at these individual severe weather threats, as I mentioned, this is a line of storm, so damaging wind gust will be your primary threat, but closely followed by tornadoes, heavy rain and large hail as those secondary threats and folks along that line. We could very well see wind gusts in excess of 70 miles per hour. So that's why I want you to be weather aware that can do a lot of damage. And here in East Texas, anytime we have strong winds, it knocks out power. Once we get through Friday's storms, we'll be at 68 Saturday afternoon, 70s return as we head into Sunday, and that's really the theme for East Texas through next week. Deep East Texas, similar trend, 80s Thursday and Friday with that threat of severe weather Friday into Saturday. Casey?